inside with signs choose indigenous to Judea to show uh, um, what we're all about. Let it yeah, we just went inside. Listen, we're not here to uh, be violent, to you know, be brutal, aggressive. We're just here to show our message, right? The message inside is they're using Palestinian suffering in order to target Jewish people's right to live in that land. We're here to share the narrative to show who re we really are. And number two, what does Zionism really mean? That the Jews have a right to live there in their homeland. And they don't know that. They think that they're talking about Palestinian suffering, which is true. There are Palestinian suffering. However, they're using and abusing Palestinian suffering in order to try and target Jewish identity and Jews being strong. That's why they're conflating Palestinian suffering with Zionism because they want everyone to get to the determination and understanding that Zionism equals something bad. We've seen that happen throughout history, trying to make Jews the source of evil, Jews the source of the problems, whether it's the Black Plague, the problems in the Inquisition, the problems in the Holocaust and the pogroms. They're trying to use the Jewish story to pin it against everyone elder minority that are suffering. And we're here to stand up against it. So hopefully we made a difference by being in there because I think they're for too long, they're too used to them going out without anyone doing anything. They're Jews are going to party on the side, they're going to have fun. However, the day where Jews are silent and quiet and on the side is over. Uh, do you think, do you see this as a, a political or territorial dispute or is there a, a theological aspect to it? There are many aspects to this problem. However, what this organization is doing, Students for Justice in Palestine, is purely using Palestinian suffering only when it has to do with Israel. It means they won't talk about Palestinians dying by thousands in Syria, by the hundreds of thousands of refugee camps in Lebanon, suffering without equal rights in Jordan or on the border of Gaza and Egypt. They will only talk about the Palestinian suffering in order to use their suffering to attack Israel. So they're actually also anti-Palestinian because it's functional to them for Palestinians to suffer because they would not be able to use them against Israel. Uh -huh. But why is uh, Judaism yes. so, such an anathema to them? Well, Judaism is really the preservation tool of a civilization called Judea, right? We left our civilization, or we didn't leave, we were kicked out by the Romans. And in order to preserve our culture and to pass it down generation to generation, and to one day come back home, we created something called Judaism, right? And they don't want Jews into this land for a variety of reasons. So obviously they counter Judaism, because one of the fundamental parts of Judaism is returning home to Judea. We pray towards Jerusalem. We break the glass when we get married to re resemble rebuilding the, the temple one day. All of our culture surrounds coming back home, as any native people have a home and they should come back home if they're displaced. Coming back to your your native uh, holy land. Holy land or not, you can be secular, you can be religious, this is the native land to the Jewish people. Whether they believe in the Torah or not, there's actually history that proves that these people not only were born and is, are rooted to this land, but they maintain a constant presence for that land. And you know what, we won the wars that people attacked us. So we are here now, both historically and currently. The, uh, re um, sorry, the population in uh, Judea, all of Israel, has never been lower than 20% Jewish. In all of history, all of the human beings there have never been lower than 20% Jews. Jews never went away. Never, ever, ever. The Arabs came in when uh, the Jews were uh, prosperous enough to offer jobs. Yeah, and yeah but do you think that this is, this is about uh, just how the Palestinians and the Palestinian territories are treated? Um, for some reason, the, the Palestinian territories have been used as a fulcrum from, for every Arab uh, pressure point uh, possible. I think that, that the rest of the Arab world is starting to get sick of it because it's so intractable. I love what you said about they use the Palestinian suffering Absolutely. as a club against Israel. They create the Palestinian suffering it's functional for it to, to keep create going. it. Fifty percent of all aid going to Palestine from across the world goes to build terror tunnels and their attack rockets. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They bury their rockets inside the UN hospitals the business for and them. schools the that we pay for. Thank are you. Just making the money off the backs of their people and their people are suffering, right? This is something that a lot of people on the pro israel side don't tend to understand. That Palestinians are human beings and they are also suffering from this situation. And Israel with the power, the one that has the more power, has a responsibility to change what's happening on the ground, right? So we have to both be aware of what's happening to the Palestinians but not allow someone else to use that suffering in order to attack our rights to exist because that is what's happening there. They don't actually care about Palestinians here. What event are they doing to try and promote Palestinian culture, to try and do an event about Palestinian suffering in any other land? They don't care about that. They will only talk about anything that has to do with Israel in order to demonize Israel in the face of the world. That is their goal. Why do they have an anti-normalization policy? If they represented or truly cared to help Palestinian rights, they would want to talk to Israelis. Because at the end of the day, there's no future with Palestinians just disappearing or Israelis just disappearing. If they truly cared to change things on the ground, they would talk to people like us that can inspire and change things on the ground. However, their interest is not to speak to the people on the ground. The interest is not to speak to the people that are related to this conflict, it's to speak to everyone else on this campus in order to get people to the conclusion that we don't have a right to exist. 
right? We've seen it too many times in history. It changes form from different nations to different things. However, this time it's right here and right in front of us. And it's our responsibility as a generation. We know we grew up with the term never again. We have to understand that never again does not mean it's never going to happen again. It means we took the commitment to make sure that it never happens again. And it starts with things on the ground like this, not allowing it to escalate. They should not be allowed to speak freely. I want to say something. Beautiful. There's a, there's another part of this story that isn't being told. Certainly what my brother here is, is saying is 100% true. But here's another part of this story that is taking place in Los Angeles today. These people that have assembled and taken their time to come here, they came here without any leadership, no organization, no Jewish, no Zionist organization. These are people who are saying we're drawing a line in the sand here in Los Angeles and no longer will we allow Jewish students to be bullied here on campus. We delivered a letter to the Chancellor saying as much that if he doesn't protect the Jewish students we will and if these Jewish organizations don't get more involved and teach their kids to come to campus with an understanding of the conflict then they will get bullied and they cannot make a case for Israel if they don't learn it in the synagogues here in Los Angeles, yeah. if they don't learn it from their parents here in Los Angeles. So yes, it's my generations. We are at fault for not teaching our children. Uh -huh. But so, are, aren't the majority of synagogues in Los Angeles reform and uh, politically liberal? I don't know if there's a majority. It doesn't matter if, if they're reform, if they're orthodox, it doesn't matter. The fact is they're not teaching the modern state of Israel. Sometimes they'll teach the biblical state of Israel, but our people here in America cannot make a case for Israel. Why is that? Why are the rabbis not insisting that they teach the modern state of Israel? Why can we not stand up to the accusations that Israel is apartheid-like, that Israel commits genocide? Why are these students coming here ignorant? It's because our organizations are not doing the job. And these people that have come out today are saying enough is enough. We don't need all the money. All we need are people to get active.